So today I am joined by an amazing woman, Runcy Sin. She is the president and founder of Overcome. It's an ovarian cancer um, organization based in Houston, Texas. Runcy, um, you've done some spectacular work. Thank you. Um, and this organization um, was only founded just five years ago um, from today, mm -hmm. and it's grown so much mm -hmm. in such a little you know, amount of time. So can you tell us what motivated you to start this organization? Sure, i um, always happy to share my story. So um, my mom uh, got diagnosed with ovarian cancer about nine years ago, and um, she had a very aggressive form of the disease. And so uh, despite our best efforts and treatments by the doctors, uh, she passed away within short 11 months. So this was as devastating as this was for us as an experience as a family. I realized that um, as a, a family member, as a caregiver, I did not know anything about ovarian cancer at that point. I did not know the signs, I did not know the symptoms. And so when she got diagnosed, hers was a very classic case of ovarian cancer that um, it was uh, beyond stage one, beyond stage two, beyond stage three even. So she got diagnosed when she was uh, stage four, and so her chances of survival at that point was already so low um, that we didn't have a fighting chance. So I feel, having gone through the journey with my mom, I realized that even back then, I knew everything about breast cancer. I knew this, that we had to do a mammogram each year um, as we go for our well woman visits. I knew what, the, what might be the signs of breast cancer. And that was largely because of the education and the awareness um, that uh, has, uh, has this disease has been surrounded with. So, but in comparison, ovarian cancer does not have a voice as as big and bright as, as breast cancer. And uh, hence, we did not pick up on the symptoms, even though we were, we, I consider myself educated enough, but I had no idea of what ovarian cancer is. And so that was a source of, a big source of frustration for me that because uh, particularly when I realized that if she was detected early, then maybe she would be here with me today, you know, because as we know from the statistics that if you get detected in stage one um, early enough, then your chances for a five-year survival is greater than 90%. And that's not trivial information. And so um, I felt like, you know, as, as a daughter, as a family member, as a co-survivor, I needed to do something about it. And that was my trigger to leave what I was doing at that point, which um, I was working in corporate America and never thought I would uh, actually found a uh, nonprofit. But um, just my mother's experience changed the, the path of my life and I had to respond to my life's calling. And that's when I found it overcome to make a difference, to make other women aware of the signs and symptoms so that um, their disease gets detected early. And as we all know, awareness saves lives. And that's what we are uh, striving to do at Overcome, working very hard to raise the voice on ovarian cancer so more lives can be saved. Well, I think it's absolutely remarkable that you took something um, like a loss and turned it into something that gives to others. Mm -hmm. um, that's really that's really a great story. And I think um, even the people and members of the organizations would agree. Um, and of course, we're happy to have you in Houston, <laughs> of all places. So um, what does Overcome do? And, and what is the foundation um, outside of awareness? What does it do? So um, Overcome has a three-pronged mission. Mm -hmm. So our mission is to raise awareness, as you as you mentioned, uh, on ovarian cancer, just not in the U.S., but worldwide. Uh, we also have uh, a patient assistance program that we call Overcare. And I want to say a, little, a few things about the program is um, this is a care package that we offer to underserved ovarian cancer patients. So these would be patients like, you know, that, that are already, they're in active treatment. They have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer, but they're facing life challenges. Um, so for example, it is sometimes when we talk to the patients who are recipients of Overcare Awards, uh, they are literally in a position where they are making a decision between 
going to the doctor's appointment or staying home because they don't have enough gas in the car. Or it could be making a decision between buying medication for herself or buying food to stock the fridge for her children. So when women go through a disease as overwhelming as this and on top of that they are struggling with financial conditions right. you can imagine how difficult it might be for for women going through this so we figured that there was this this is an opportunity for us as a nonprofit to uh, to extend our support to these women uh, yeah. when they're going through this diagnosis so that every bit helps and our care package has a gas card it has a grocery card it has a financial grant that they can use towards their electric bills or however they choose to um, use it. We also have an optional spa certificate that we offer to these patients. So the, uh, the objective behind this care package is to celebrate the entire woman uh, and to enhance their quality of life while they're going to active treatment. And the way this program works is uh, we work with our partner hospitals and we work with the social workers, the uh, nurse navigators, and the case managers, and they are the ones that identify the patients on our behalf, and then they will send us the application, and then we will process it on our end once we receive it. So the, the good news story with this uh, particular program that we have is we launched this uh, three years ago in 2014 with MD Anderson as our primary partner. But since then, in the last three years, just because there's so much need for a program like this, it has grown to 23 hospitals in uh, wow. about eight or nine states. So, and we are, I feel like we're just about beginning with, with this program yeah. because uh, so many more patients might benefit from a service like this. So we are working with other organizations, other hospitals as we speak, so that we can expand um, this service. So that's the second um, uh, mission uh, that we have, second part of the mission. And then the, the last one, which is definitely not the least, is research funding. So we all know that research is ultimately going to find a cure for ovarian cancer. Right. And so we are active believers in research funding. We love to uh, fund research, which is uh, in early detection, which is in um, you know, uh, prevention strategies, and we like to fund uh, research for young scientists and um, young investigators that are emerging uh, to uh, have them engaged, to keep them interested in this field so that they can work um, and uh, more and more years and give us more breakthrough research right. so that we can ultimately find a cure for ovarian cancer. So we are big into research, like to sum summarize, for um, early detection or uh, prevention. We also do some funding for survivor, you know, survival um, treatments, uh, but uh, we like to keep our focus on early detection and prevention and for new emerging young investigators. Well, that's really important, right? Because the young minds of today will be the pioneers of Absolutely. our tomorrow. yes. So mm -hmm. it's just really impressive to see the kind of work that the organization is doing. Um, so with that being said, what message do you have for you know the members of Overcome and other ovarian cancer survivors? So my message to, to our audience is um, ovarian cancer is a silent disease, but we really don't have to be silent about it. We, what we need to do is just be the opposite. We need to be vocal about ovarian cancer. We need to talk about ovarian cancer. Talk to your friends, to your family members, to your neighbors, to your co-workers, to everyone in, in your network. Even if you can share just one symptom of ovarian cancer to, your, to the person next to you, then you have helped to raise awareness on a disease which is the deadliest of all gynecologic cancers and which causes more deaths uh, in women than any other uh, reproductive or gynecologic cancer. So I um, encourage you all to, especially the survivor community, to be uh, vocal about uh, the disease, being, be advocates of, um, of survivorship and also for the friends and family members and the caregivers to keep talking about ovarian cancer and raise awareness in every little way counts. So even if it's like a small walk with your friends and family members or a house party or something uh, which, uh, which gives you an opportunity to talk about ovarian cancer, do that 
and we have so many brochures and information and um, our website uh, has all the information that you might need our social media on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram you can go there you can download information you can share so again please 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 keep talking about ovarian cancer give this silent disease a voice so that ultimately we can all work to, towards a cure and um, I believe strongly in this message that it's not you it's not me it's us and so we can together we can overcome so thank you, thank you.